Welcome again here on day two of the Embedded World 2023. And thanks for joining us here at the Exhibitors Forum. Our next topic is Meta, the promise of seamless device interoper interoperability. And our speaker today is Paolo Scanioffi from STM Microelectronics. Enjoy. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the surname is Scanifio, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> okay. And uh, today I'm here to give you an overview about matter because in 30 minutes it, it will be very difficult to give you uh, details. But the, the aim of the presentation is to give you some, some seeds, some uh, information and some uh, uh, input about the standard. Before to start, uh, I want to share with you an experience that I did uh, exactly yesterday that gave me uh, a better view about matter. Okay? Yesterday, I think, uh, like the most of you, I uh, landed in the Munich airport, okay? and I needed to rent a car to come here. And when I go into the car, my phone was completely discharged, and so I took my uh, USB connector, I connected to the car, and after, I think, five seconds on the display, it, happened, uh, it appears a message, okay, do you want to enable Apple CarPlay? Oh, cool, yes, sure. Sure that I want. Few steps after, I do add. Uh, I did add my uh, screen that I'm happy to have on my car. Everything was mine. My icons, my uh, setup, my agenda for the telephone, and I said, "Oh, cool. That's the aim." My user experience at that time has been fantastic. Okay, seamless usage, two steps. Everything went fine since the beginning. And this is exactly where Matter wants to bring the IoT connected uh, devices. Okay? Because so far, let me skip the agenda. We will talk about the agenda. So far, the IoT connected devices has been a huge market. And so far, if we see, if we have a look about uh, uh, the uh, CAGR that are indicators of uh, the growth from 22 to 27, we can see uh, that if we took a couple of technologies, Bluetooth Low Energy and the 802.15.4 as a marker or indicators about IoT connected devices, uh, we can see that there is a growth. Okay? But it is also true that so far, IoT connected devices, uh, uh, the mass deployment of that has been slowed down because of many factors. And what are those many factors? I think that you, you can share with me your common experience, okay? In your house, you have uh, uh, perhaps uh, Google or Mokita, someone Alexa, others can have uh, Apple, okay? And, uh, and then you have uh, your wife that is uh, Google, your son that is uh, Samsung, uh, okay? All those main brands did a good, very good job to create ecosystem infrastructure to secure and to create a very good user experience. But indeed, they are still bubbles, okay? Each one is doing what they want. There is no a common way to interact. And then if you have, uh, uh, I don't know, just to, to say two names, Alexa and Google in your house, they don't talk. They can stay, but they don't talk. And sometimes if you say Alexa or you can call Alexa Google, he said, no, I'm not Google, I'm Alexa. Okay. And here, if we talk about the big names, the giant names, but if we talk instead of the IoT mass and cheap uh, devices that we have uh, out there, we can understand that uh, you give to those devices your credential for the Wi-Fi, but who grants you that those are secure enough to protect your house? I don't know. They have my credential. And if they start doing something, you know that the latest uh, attack to, house, uh, uh, the, to your houses is made no more on the routers that are now protected, but from the small devices, like connected cameras, uh, connected switches, because on that, so far, there were not the idea to make them so secure, so protected, and so on. And then, come on, 
you open your smartphone, you have the application to uh, the, go, the gate door opener, the application for this, the application for that. OK, the user experience for guys that are technical is good. But my wife say, OK, Paolo, please manage the device yourself because I cannot understand too many, too many stuff. OK, so those problems that are listed here, so huge complexity, uh, there are many. And for sure, there are kind of, uh, uh, let's say, users that are not able to work around it to try to find the solution. They are not. It does not work in a minute. Oh, OK, put. Vast it immediately. Various ecosystem, as we said, and then the a lack of security. OK, overall, OK, I don't want to say all, but overall is a lack of security. And so uh, the market was uh, strongly asking for a simplification, OK, to improve the IoT adoption. OK, CSA, uh, the Connectivity Standard Alliance, comes, understood the problem, OK? Uh, we, we have to remember that they were already in this uh, uh, philosophy with uh, Zigbee and with the other. The protocol, but they understood that, that uh, a step further it needed to, to be done. And in fact, uh, they unravel the, this, uh, all these problems that we discussed, uh, and they come uh, with something, OK? With the aim to simplify, to create an open context, uh, meaning something that everyone can adopt, OK? To promote, uh, again, uh, this open standard, and to enable all the objects, IoT connected, to be secured, connected through an open standard. And this, as a name, is Matter. Okay? So Matter is meant to create a seamless and super user-friendly installation, super secure environment, so that you don't have to, to go to the shop and say, OK, I do have this at home, so what I have to buy, this is compatible. No, it's matter. Whatever is your system at home, you buy it, you install in few steps. OK? So what is matter? Matter is an application layer. No more than that, OK? It's an application software running or relying on top of uh, standard uh, layers that are well known to the market that are basically IPv6 based, OK? So it uses IPv6. Why IPv6? Easy. Thousand or millions of addresses, worldwide addressable, OK? It's well proven. And it is uh, uh, available on two or three main channels. Wi-Fi, OK? Thread that is able, the, it is a narrowband 2.5 gigahertz uh, protocol uh, that is able to transport IPv6. And then, of course, also Ethernet, uh, the, standard, the standard cable. Okay? So please remember this uh, stratification or these layers uh, because it, it matters, <laughs> uh, because it gives you uh, a real idea. So also, uh, when we will talk about the certification, you will understand the kind of okay, certification that you have to achieve in order to have your product ready matter. The context. The context is basically smart home and smart building, OK? So let's talk about the smart home. We, we know very well. I don't have a three floors uh, house, but OK, you can, <laughs> if you have, uh, good for you. But the idea is very simple. You have uh, this guy that is a border router, OK? It is uh, connected to your access point uh, uh, through Ethernet or through Wi-Fi, OK? And what this is uh, uh, main task is to create a thread network in your house. Thread is a mesh network, 2.4 gigahertz, IPv6, as I said before. And the good is that, OK, even if you have a three floors house, because of the mesh, if the border router is not able to reach directly one device, the mesh is uh, uh, self-adapting in order to route everything uh, to the border router. And then you have the smartphone. In this case, the smartphone, but it's not limited to the smartphone. This is the controller of your network. We will see right after some, some other uh, possibilities. The smartphone is used for two stuff, basically. The first one is to uh, allow or to easy the enrollment. Uh, you buy a new device. You want to 
put at home, and you need a way to say to your network, OK, this is a new device. And this is typically done with the uh, um, with smartphone, thanks to the Bluetooth Low Energy. We will come in a minute. And then when the new device is enrolled, is onboarded on your network, OK, you, have, you may want to light on uh, the, 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 the lights uh, and to do additional stuff. OK, so this is the. Uh, way with which you onboard and you control your network. Some terminologies, OK? As I said before, the controllers. Controllers is the equipment meant to control the network. I give you the example of the smartphone because it's the, it's the easy one. But it could be something else, your home assistant, or perhaps also your uh, thermostat that has, it is uh, matter ready, and it is also a controller, or any kind of display with which you can control your network. In your matter network, you can have many controllers, OK? Uh, your wife uh, may want to have uh, its one, your son's also. OK, that's all. And then the targets. The targets are basically a cluster, and this is coming directly from ZigBee concept. Those are. Uh, kind of equipment that have a common profile. And so you have uh, uh, those targets that you can control. In addition to that, those are still targets but belongs on a different, uh, let's say, subgroup. We do have the access points or the border router and the bridges. I will give you basic information about both in a minute. So if we come back to your network, OK? This is a little bit more complex, OK? Uh, believe me, then you can see right after. Uh, you have your, um, um, your router. This is your access point, OK? Uh, it must to be IPv6. Otherwise, the, the game uh, does not work, OK? Um, your, border, your access point. And then you have your border router, OK? The border router, as I said, is meant to establish the thread network, and then you have your thread network with many devices, OK? Then you have controllers, OK, many, many smartphones, many end equipments, OK? The uh, transportation layers that you have here can be Wi-Fi, as I said. So your network could be Wi-Fi, only Wi-Fi without a thread or Wi-Fi and thread, or only one of those, OK? But at least one of them uh, you must have, or Ethernet, in addition to that. As I said at the beginning, uh, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, in this case, is used, uh, but it's used only for the commissioning. After the commissioning, Bluetooth goes sleep. But there is a complexity from, uh, from a technical point of view, because uh, uh, there is a moment on which Bluetooth Low Energy and thread uh, or Bluetooth Low Energy and Wi-Fi must work together at the same time. And this creates, from a technical point of view, some, uh, some uh, headache, some troubles. Okay. What matter add, because this is more or less, OK, uh, where is the new? OK. What matter added is the security at each stage of the process. OK. Starting from the enrollment. Basically, a new device, first of all, it must to be matter certified. Otherwise, OK, you cannot use. Full stop. Um, also, the enrollment, uh, meaning uh, before you deploy the credential of your Wi-Fi or the keys or the master key of your thread network are deployed to the device, must to be verified as a genuine uh, system. Otherwise, the system is not getting any data that is super sensible for you. If you deploy your Wi-Fi keys, you open your network. Okay. When the new device that is that have been uh, defined as genuine, good, certified, and so it is deployed with the Wi-Fi credential, for instance, joined to the network, each single byte here is encrypted with the most secure encryption that uh, we have. Nowadays, OK? So the aim of this is that your network is uh, secure. Your data are really secure. OK, <laughs> this, is a, this is a good point. But what if you already have deployed on your house 
uh, a lighting uh, system. So you already spent a lot of money, and so what? Now that the matter comes, so you have asked everything, and okay, no. CSA did a good job here because they also uh, foreseen the, uh, the possibility to add uh, bridges, okay? Bridges are bridges, okay? Are the guys that are simply, let me switch, that this is nice, are simply translate, could be, the matter word into something else, okay? So you have your lighting bulb system that is Zigbee, that is sub giga, that is I don't know, you invented because your company has a super know-how on a sub giga, super secure system, okay, no problem. You can translate the two words. This guy, what has to do is to take your private network or the existing network that you have, and it has to translate the uh, how, the, the profile, the cluster, okay? The information that is transferring, and that's all, okay? Of course, in this case, the complexity is a little bit higher, and we will see in a second, but this is absolutely feasible and uh, stated on the matter specification. And this is great, because uh, as I said, the thread is 2.4 gigahertz, good, but we know that 2.4 gigahertz, okay, it could add, have some issues in range, so you can bridge with sub giga, why not, okay? And have uh, uh, your system. How these technology or these requirements translate on devices, okay? You remember the first slide that I said, please uh, uh, remember. We have uh, uh, the matter layer, then we have TCP, UDP, IPv6, and then you could have uh, thread, Bluetooth low energy, perhaps also Wi-Fi all together. And then on top, on top of that, you may want to do your application, right? <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's useless. And so the stratification of the software is huge, OK? This is not meant for super tiny or super um, constrained uh, device, devices. But we will see in a moment, you, are, you have still the possibility to use standard wireless MCUs with some requirements, special requirements, but those are standard, okay? So for the end devices, uh, that could be uh, TV, TV access, um, the HVAC controls, uh, or whatever, you can use a standard wireless MCUs, or you can use a standard wireless MCU as a coprocessor, okay? Because perhaps your system has a super cool graphic display, 10 inch, Okay, so a wireless MCU is not meant for that, okay? So you can keep uh, an MCU high performance with graphic support and then use a standard wireless MCU as co-processor. Uh, While uh, for the access point bridges, uh, border routers and bridges, uh, in this case, uh, they, they need to do some, something more, okay? The computational power they need is a little bit higher because typically they are translating Ethernet IPv6 to uh, if it is a bridge to something else, to Zigbee, okay? So typically, it is used uh, a wireless MCU as a coprocessor for an MPU or a high-performance MCU. And we will see uh, our development, okay? Certifications. Again, remember the stratification that I said. Bluetooth low energy, thread, Wi-Fi, and then matter. All of those must to be certified, okay? And before to go to the CSA and say, okay, guys, I'm a new, I want to certify matter my, my product, you have to demonstrate that you have the, if it is Bluetooth, uh, you have this SIG certification. If it is a thread, uh, you have uh, uh, the need to be thread group certified. If it is Wi-Fi, you need to be Wi-Fi Alliance certified. And then you go with those certification to, to the CSA and say, okay, I'm already, the transport layers are certified, please certify my uh, matter application, okay? It's uh, many steps, okay? That's, that's the message. As I said, you must to be certified, otherwise the, the, the party does not start. Uh, for the time being, 
you must to go to uh, uh, accredited laboratories, okay? So you cannot uh, inherit in any meaning for a new device. You cannot inherit uh, any previous certification also coming from, uh, from uh, the silicon vendor, okay? And as I said, each layer must to be certified. So what are the challenges as of today? <sighs> Again, the memory footprint as of today is 900K flash for a single instance of matter, 900K byte, okay, flash. And then if you want and you must have OTA, you have to double. And then you have also your application on top of, the, of it. Okay, I don't know how much is your application. So, hmm. it's not meant for tiny devices. You need thread and Bluetooth low energy concurrent. Just to say that Bluetooth low energy is not mandatory if your equipment has the possibility to enter by a meaning of a display or keyboard or something else, uh, the uh, passcode. Okay, so it's not mandatory if you have another meaning to uh, provide the credentials. As of today, the ecosystem from, from the CSA is only uh, Linux, okay? And this is, okay, could be, could be a trouble, a deck, something more. And then, how CSA gives you the right to put on the field uh, a new device. The rights are coming from the DAC. And the DAC is a certifi certificate that is the result of your certification process. This certificate is uh, uh, signed uh, by a root of trust, okay, for which you need the pie, that is a key. And this must be deployed into your device. So each device must be provisioned by at least the DAC, additional keys. You need to ask to the uh, CSA your vendor ID. You, you need to have your vendor ID and product ID. And there are additional, uh, it is called uh, data factory, something like that, uh, that describes your product, OK? All of those must to be deployed in each device during, the, uh, during the, your, uh, your building, OK? And again, to reinforce the message, everything must to be uh, certified. OK, how we at SD support this business, OK, or this opportunity? With two main, uh, let's say, micro blocks, STM32, I think, I hope that you know our STM32 MCUs that could be used for bridges, for access point, or even the MPUs, OK? With the STM32 WB wireless series, that is the, the, what you need to go wireless. And then thanks to the ecosystem, the STM32 Cube ecosystem that provides you all the need, the software, the software, the tools, the debug, and so on, OK? Everything stated here apart the MCU that you have to pay, is free of charge. Uh, a quick snapshot about the STM32 WB seri series. When you see W after the STM32, it means wireless, OK? So why the STM32 WB? Because it's a dual core, Cortex-M4 and Cortex-M0. Because we don't know how much is complex your application. Remember, matter is an application layer, OK? So what we do is to load the stacks, Bluetooth Low Energy and Thread, on the Cortex-M0 Plus. And this is a black box. This, this goes, OK? You, you cannot touch, you cannot uh, influence or corrupt the, uh, the, 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 the protocols. And then you have the Cortex-M4, where you run the matter and your application. One meg flash, 256k byte of RAM. I forgot to say that the RAM is needed by matter is about 200k, OK? So you still have uh, some, some freedom, more or less, OK? WB is good because it's multi-protocol. It also, it, it, it is able to run in concurrency matter and thread, or ZigBee and Bluetooth, uh, pardon, Bluetooth Low Energy and thread, and or Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy and ZigBee simultaneously, OK? 
is a one-stop shop because we do provide all the ecosystem needed for you, starting from the graphical configuration of the hardware and the check of if your hardware and your peripherals are good, up to the tools to certify the, or to verify the uh, radio frequency. So everything is uh, inside this main box. And then there is a large portfolio, OK? Large portfolio that includes module. So on our booth, and I invited you to, to reach us, on our booth, you will see uh, matter running on the SOC and on the modules also, OK? Uh, why the modules? The modules is very, very cool because it has uh, 72 GPIOs, OK? So you can make your application. It has one Mac flash, and in addition to that, is, uh, it does support the execution in place uh, thanks to the code SPI. So you can enlarge the flash uh, as much as you want. And then 10 years longevity commitment. This is a legal commitment. Every year, we renew this 10 years longevity commitment so you can count on these devices at least for the next 10 years. If we don't renew the program, it means that you have nine years in front of you. OK? Super cool. And let me add uh, a very important point. ST invested a lot on capacity for wireless products and for other products okay, in our series. So zero problem of deliveries, zero problem of capacity. We are coming all from <laughs> a very good moment. OK, let me skip uh, rapidly this. But uh, the SDK that we do provide are uh, available both for Linux and Windows. So we do a step forward versus what the CSA uh, did so far. So we do provide the Linux and Windows environment. We do provide the Xcube Matter. This is an SDK. This is an add-on. Why an add-on and not integrated on our environment? Because this is STM32 agnostic. You can load the Xcube Matter onto an MCU or a wireless MCU in order to build your uh, application. Okay, so it's agnostic for that. And then we do have also a GitHub hotspot. I will give you all the references uh, right after, in which we provide, uh, let's say, unofficial releases. Okay? And so far, uh, because we are still in the process to finalize our releases, um, all the deliverables are in uh, GitHub hotspot. GitHub hotspot. OK, let me skip here. So the demo that you can enjoy at our booth where there are experts on the topic that can answer to all your questions, and where I think that you can also get some evaluation board uh, for free. OK. In terms of uh, um, this is the block diagram of the application, OK? So you have your controller, the smartphone, you have the gateway. And in this case, uh, we will see is an MPU with uh, the stn 32 wb as a radio coprocessor. And then you have the matter device that instead is fully running on the module that is this guy in the corner over there. If we translate in, uh, uh, let's say, <laughs> a better block diagram, I like this one, OK? So what you can see, OK, here, you can control your network through two devices. In this case, is, uh, I think that you have recognized this is a Google Nest or your mobile phone, OK? Those are Wi-Fi connected to the gateway, OK, or the border router. The border router is a standard MPU, OK, connected with the WB as a radio coprocessor. And this creates the thread network, OK, with which the, uh, the end devices are connected. The demo is a light bulb, so you will see giant bulbs. And the idea is to dimmer, to switch on and off. This is a cluster for the, right bulb, the, the light bulb. Uh, funny story is that uh, we are running uh, matter on the evaluation board, the nucleo. This is the easiest one without any additional stuff around. Or on the discovery that is based on the module. The module, again, is this guy over there. It's 11 by 7 with the integrated antenna. OK? Uh, the matter bridge. We do have also the matter bridge, OK? But we don't have here today because of the space on the, on the booth. The matter bridge is easy, OK? Uh, it is based on STM32H7, OK? H7 is in high performance. It's a Cortex-M7, uh, 550 megahertz, so 
okay, with a lot of power computation. It is used the stn 32 wb as a um, uh, radio coprocessor, and it translates matter to ZigBee. And this is all the deliverables that you can download and test by yourself today, not tomorrow. Okay, takeaways, guys. Sorry, I go a little bit longer, but uh, three main takeaways for you today, and then <laughs> we are done. So we really, we strongly believe in matter, okay? There are still some question mark about the size, about the challenges, but the, the basis are very good, okay? So uh, we really believe that matter is the base for a massive IoT adoption, okay? We at ST, we are fully committed on matter. We are also on the board of directors, and uh, we are ready to follow as we do now and the future, the new, uh, the new releases, okay? And we do support on all our series from NCU and MPU. And finally, <laughs> you're welcome to join us to have a talk with our expert. I will be also there. They can really go into the details, okay? If you have any, any additional question. I'm sorry for the question. I think that we don't have a uh, time, but really, if you want to join, Please join us at the all for a and here are some QR codes where you can get uh, uh, access to uh, the deliverables uh, ready today. So thank you very much and see you at our booth. <laughs>